So today I'll be talking about kidding and lambing and difficult births. Most goats can give birth without human help, but if you plan on raising goats or lambs as a part of your lifestyle, you need to know the basics of kidding and lambing so you can help when you have to um, and some other difficult birthing complications that may arise. So with sheep and goats, there is two stages of labor. The first stage of labor, the uterus contracts and dilates and will force the unborn kid against the cervix, which is the neck of the uterus. Um, this process can last about 12 hours for goats that are kidding for the first time, but every goat is kind of different, so you just have to be aware of what's happening. Um, the goat will be restless during this stage. She may lick herself or will lick you. Uh, sometimes they want to be left alone. Uh, their labor may slow down or stop if you're around. So the second stage of labor, this is when the doe is pushing the baby out of her uterus. Her contractions will get stronger and if the kid is lined up correctly, it'll start moving down the birth canal. So it's technically the pushing stage. So from the time the goat starts pushing until the first kid is delivered, it should only take 30 minutes. Um, if it takes longer than this, the kid may be malpositioned or the doe may have some other issues. So you need to be able to investigate whether the kid is stuck or coming out wrong to determine if you need a vet or how you need to intervene. So you will usually see some thicker discharge in the stage, sometimes blood, and then there's gonna be a bubble at the opening of the vagina. This is the amniotic membrane. And if you look in the bubble, you should usually see a nose and one or two little hooves coming out. So on the left here, we have a picture and it's a normal birth presentation. Uh, the goat or the lamb is positioned head first with its hooves outstretched. So after the bubble appears, the doe will continue to push the kid out, sometimes stopping. Uh, sometimes she will circle around. Uh, she knows she's expecting a baby. So within a half hour, the baby should slide out. And often the kids are still in the amniotic membrane. And if the amniotic membrane doesn't break when the kid comes out, you need to break it and clean the fluids from the kid's mouth and nostrils to make sure the kid can breathe and cough to clear this excess mucus. So breech presentation with the back feet first is fairly normal with goats. Uh, if the kids are small or if the lambs are small, even like a tail first presentation doesn't present a huge issue. The risk in breech birth is the possibility of the baby inhaling the amniotic fluid. So if they are in this back leg position, a steady pull on the hind legs should ensure that the kid's head comes out promptly. Um, but to the right, we have a picture. You can see other positions where you have the butt coming out. You have one hoof. You may have one hoof up and the head coming out. You may have the head turned inside the goat. Uh, these are some bad breech positions. So you need to glove up and get in there and hopefully readjust. You want to have at least two hooves. You don't want the head to be turned. Uh, you may have to like literally readjust the entire goat on the inside so they can come out in a position that's not gonna cause any more issues or damage to the goat. So with these breaching positions, you can also have issues of them inhaling the fluid. So if you get the baby out, you don't want them to suffocate. So there's a method known as swinging kids and you can basically hold the kid by the feet with one hand um, and then have one hand on the area between the head and the neck and you're just gonna swing the goat back and forth. Uh, so you can clean out the fluid if they inhaled any, and then you need to check the kid's breathing and repeat the process to make sure it's breathing. This fluid can get in there, so suffocation is possible. So sometimes you can also, also have a case of where the goat is having a baby that's too big. Generally, the risk for overly large single kids is more common in the first fresheners. In most cases, intervention by assisting is enough. Then afterwards, you may have to give your doe a nutrient drench, uh, some alfalfa to help with her recovery. 
the kid may be traumatized from the complicated birth and you need to check for injuries on the kid and the mom just to ensure that everybody is going to be okay. Um, sometimes a C-section might be necessary, necessary to save your dough in these situations where the babies are too big. So another common issue is the prolapse. It's a weird experience. Uh, so basically, usually what happens is the insides of the goats are being pushed out because the babies are pushing them out of the way. So basically you need to rinse the prolapse well and then put some sugar all over it to reduce the swelling. And then you can push it back inside. So you can either wait for the birth to happen and then do the pro put the prolapse back inside of the goat. But sometimes like you may have more severe issues with the prolapses where you may need a veterinarian out there. Um, in a severe case, you may need to do sutures or two to hold the prolapse in place until the muscles take back over and keep it inside. So these are some of the more extreme things that happen, but it is actually pretty common. So there are some more extreme circumstances with complications at birth with the goats and the sheep. Um, I will address some of these on the next page. And let's just say these are not for the faint of the heart. So if you don't want to see anything creepy or anything, then you may not want to look at the next slide. So here we are looking at um, a two-headed goat. It was born very recently in a family farm in Wisconsin. Um, I saw this post originally on Facebook, and I think it was the beginning of April when this was born, and it's actually not as abnormal as you would think. I found out that the dairy goat farm I worked at before I worked there, they had a situation with a two-headed goat. And sometimes, you know, these animals can live... Uh, but also they usually will end up having some complications in the future and it's harder for them to survive. So it'll be up to you and your vet to decide what the best path is to take when you get delivery of, you know, some of these severe cases. So on the right, you can see we have a cyclops goat. This is definitely not even very common as well definitely another extreme circumstance uh, we've not had any of these issues on our farm um, but they can be seen and usually it's speculated because of a hormonal imbalance and in this configuration the goat is usually unable to eat and can't live for very long uh, this is just another extreme you know birthing complication that is possible So the best way to prevent and act on these birthing difficulties is be as prepared as you can. You want to handle your goat and sheep birth complications to the best of your abilities. You know, if things go wrong, you can learn from your mistakes. You want to make sure you always have a veterinarian handy. But sometimes, like, you can do most of this at home by yourself, but you may need professional advice, even if it's just a phone call. So... Just be present at birth, be ready to glove up. You know, if breach presentation, you may have to go in and adjust the kids. You need to be ready to clear out airways of kids and the lambs, you know, if they have any suffocation issues. And then have your vet on call, you know. Caesarean is always possible, but you know, it is very costly, but usually you can prevent having to go this route. So here are some of my references. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to reply below. And good luck with your birthings.